So today we're sitting, um, we're standing in a, in a nursery um, where we have pretty intense SDS symptoms. And I'm gonna talk about um, how, the, how the pathogen actually affects the plant. So the infection cycle would start with planting into cool, wet soils. Um, the pathogen's present in the soil. Um, sudden death syndrome is, is caused by a specific fusarium fungus. So the soybeans are planted and they germinate. And then very quickly, uh, that fusarium species is going to start colonizing that emerging radical. Um, or the, the first root that comes out. So it's gonna start colonizing that. Um, but um, as the soybeans germinate, come above ground, you won't see any symptoms. So we won't see any symptoms at all um, until uh, early pod fill is normally when we start seeing that. And so what's happened to that point, the soybean has grown into a normal plant, it's flowered, um, but then below ground, we've had um, a lot of infection in the roots. And that fusarium fungus has penetrated really deeply into those roots, and uh, we're gonna start seeing symptomology. And so what we first see when we, when we walk into our field is normally we'll see um, some mild um, chlorosis, which is the, yellow, uh, the, the yellowing on the leaves. So the toxin is in the soil, it's, it's infected the roots, um, and you start seeing this, this uh, uh, intervenal chlorosis. So what will start happening is in that pod fill stage, the plants are really starting to, to really pull in a lot, of, of, a lot of moisture. So this is their peak demand for water use. And so coinciding with that peak demand is uh, the toxin is going to be, or the, the pathogen is going to start releasing a toxin um, that's going to be killing these leaves. And so as that toxin progresses up, it, it transforms from intervenal uh, chlorosis into necrosis, where you actually start having the burning and the death on the leaves. And in severely affected leaves and susceptible varieties, you get, um, you know, full leaf death, where the, the whole leaf is just a, a crispy pile. Um, notice that the, that the veins are actually still green, um, and so that's the intravenal um, chlorosis and necrosis. So we've talked about the foliar symptoms um, and, and aspects of the disease, but the real story lies below ground. Um, so what I've done is I've actually pulled uh, a couple of plants out of, out of a very susceptible variety. We can see most of the leaves are burned off of this, this variety. And then a, a, a pretty tolerant variety, which has, still has a big biomass, a lot of leaf structure, and, and not a lot of death to it. When you actually uh, carefully pull those root systems out, what you actually see is the, the, the fusarium fungus has not only sent toxins and burned the leaves off, but it's basically degraded um, the entire root system. So in, in, in my right hand um, it is the infected root system and all the lateral roots are basically burned off. If you look really closely, there's actually lots of other, since the roots are, are almost dead, there's lots of other pathogens that have, that have um, uh, jumped on board and have really degraded them. So, you know, even though this has no leaves to produce any beans, uh, the root structure is not, not, uh, not good either. So, um, it's not going to be able to pull enough water to, to make any any soybeans either. So that's 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 why this is really going to have such a a, a bad yield loss. Um, in my in my left hand, uh, this is the the more tolerant variety, and what you can see um, are are much more um, much more lateral roots. So still a lot of, of root branching, a lot of um, um, secondary root structures, and and this is all because the 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 variety is is much more tolerant of that pathogen. And so infection is not very intense. There has not been a lot of degradation and this root system is, is very healthy. And so this plant is actually gonna be able to uh, complete its life cycle, pull enough water to fill these pods um, and it's gonna have uh, pretty nice yields. So now I'm gonna talk about a couple of management practices uh, that you can use to avoid um, some of the SDS symptomology and yield losses associated with it. Um, so, the disease cycle starts at planting. So one of the biggest things you can do is if you have a field that has a history of SDS symptoms is to avoid planting in cool wet conditions. A lot of times that means delaying planting, um, sometimes even towards the end of May um, or, or, or later in some cases to where that soil temperatures are, are much higher um, and they're much drier than you know uh, an April 25th planting date. Um, so you're trying to avoid that initial infection cycle. What happens then is the soybeans are able to germinate very quickly, get out of the ground, and avoid a lot of the initial infections. That'll go a long ways towards um, reducing a lot of the symptoms later on. Um, another management practice um, is, is uh, soybean cyst nematode. So cyst susceptible varieties um, in generally have much worse SDS symptomology. So again, if you have a SCN susceptible variety, you get um, not only nematode feeding on the roots, uh, which is just another entry point for the fusarium. So you need to plant a resistant variety um, to control that. Um, another management practice uh, is, is uh, compaction will um, 
make SDS worse. And so anything you can do to, to avoid creating compaction or to, to try and solve some of the compaction issues in your field uh, could go uh, some ways towards reducing that. And, and the final and, and one of the most important is selecting resistant varieties. Um, so um, selecting tolerant varieties. So there is no resistance uh, to soybean, uh, to sudden death syndrome, um, but there is levels of tolerance. And so uh, the ratings that uh, DuPont Pioneer would, would put out, um, you would be best to select those with the highest tolerance rating to SDS. Um, and so those are gonna have genetic, uh, the genetic potential to withstand the SDS pathogen uh, and give you the greatest return for your field.